Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on calculating positive and negative predicted value using Excel. I will also be calculating sensitivity, specificity, prevalence, and accuracy. So taking a look at these fictitious data I have loaded in this worksheet, we have a table that contains the number of participants falling into one of four different categories. So over here to the left we have an assessment result and let's say that we're using a counseling assessment that's designed to detect substance use disorder. So there are only two possible results of this assessment disorder or no disorder. And then up top we have the actual result. So this would be the result from some sort of comprehensive evaluation that we assume represents reality. And again, there are only two possible results, disorder or no disorder. So for this first value, 165, this means we have 165 participants that are classified as true positives. The assessment indicated they had the disorder and in actuality they had the disorder. This is a true positive. Moving down here to this value 25, this represents the number of false negatives. The assessment showed no disorder, but in actuality they had the disorder. That's a false negative. Moving to the top right we have 35. This number represents false positives. The disorder was indicated by the assessment but it did not exist in reality. And then for this bottom right value, we have 90. These are true negatives. The assessment result indicated no disorder, and in actuality, there was no disorder. That's a true negative. And then looking at these totals, starting here at the first row, 200 indicates the number of participants that were found to have this disorder using the assessment. So the true positives plus the false positives. 115 represents the number of participants where the result was no disorder from the assessment. And that's false negatives plus true negatives. Looking at the rows, we have value 190. This re represents the number of participants that had the disorder in actuality. 165 plus 25. True positives plus false negatives. And then the 125 indicates the number of participants that did not have the disorder in actuality, the false positives plus the true negatives, 125. So let's take a look at sensitivity. Sensitivity is equal to the number of true positives divided by true positives plus false negatives. So in this case, it would be equal to 165 divided by 190. Sensitivity is the probability that the assessment will indicate a disorder among the participants who actually have the disorder. This is also known as the true positive rate. So to build the formula to calculate sensitivity, we'll start with equal sign. It's true positive divided by true positive plus false negative. So the sensitivity of this instrument is 86.84%. There's an 86.84% chance that the instrument will indicate a disorder for those that have the disorder. Moving down to specificity. Specificity is the probability that the assessment will indicate no disorder for those that do not have the disorder. It's also referred to as the true negative rate. So here we can see it'll be 90, that's the number of true negatives, divided by 125, the number of participants that did not have the disorder. So for this formula, I'll start with equal sign, the true negative value divided by 
the true negative plus false positive values. So we have a 72% specificity. There is a 72% chance that the instrument will indicate no disorder for those that do not have the disorder. Now let's take a look at the positive predictive value. This tells us the probability that a client with an assessment result of disorder will actually have the disorder. So it's the true positive value, 165, divided by true positive plus false positive. So 165 divided by 200. So to build this formula, this will be equal sign, true positive, divided by true positive plus false positive. So the positive predictive value is 82.5%. There's an 82.5% chance that a client with a positive assessment result will actually have the disorder. Moving on to negative predictive value. This equals the number of true negatives divided by the number of true negative plus false negative values. So 90 divided by 115. So this represents the probability that somebody who is found not to have the disorder on the assessment actually doesn't have the disorder. To calculate negative predictive value, start with equal sign, true negative divided by negative plus false negative. So the negative predictive value is 78.26%. There's a 78.26% chance that somebody found not to have the disorder on the assessment will actually not have the disorder. Next, let's take a look at prevalence. Prevalence equals the total number of clients that have the disorder divided by the total. So in this case, 190 divided by 315. So that'll be equal sign, the total number of participants with the disorder divided by the total number of participants. The prevalence here is 60.32%. And then we have the accuracy. And the accuracy tells us the probability that the instrument will have a correct result, whether that's a true positive or a true negative. Both of those are correct results. So it's the number of true positives plus the number of true negatives divided by the total number of participants. So this will be equal sign, true positive plus true negative divided by total number of participants. The accuracy for this assessment is 80.95%. I hope you found this video on calculating positive and negative predicted value in Excel to be useful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.